Welcome to the Bible GPS Institute. It's once again a privilege for me to be with you. We continue our series on the vulnerability of God. But before we do that, I just want to thank you for your ongoing support. I get feedback from people about this sermons from the podcast as well. So thank you very much for that. And also we are growing. More people are tuning in and more people are signing up for our newsletter. And we also are very thankful for people who support us financially. So from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of our board, I would like to thank you. So before we continue our second message on our series on the intense vulnerability of God, let us just bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you that we can gather in your name. Thank you, God, that we can come to the Bible to get a a better understanding of who you are. Lord, we know that we are in a pandemic that makes us truly aware of our own vulnerability. And thank you, Lord, that we know that you are with us, that you sustain us with your grace, that we are friends and family who who can support us during these days. But thank you, Lord, for your word. The Bible says that Your word is everlasting, heaven and earth shall pass, but your word will never pass because it's eternal. Your word has the complete wisdom of God. That is why it will endure forever. And thank you, Lord, that we can go to your word so that we can see what it has to say for us in these days. We pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. As I said, we are busy with our series on the intense vulnerability of God. I have some people who contacted me and wrote to me and said, you know, they never thought about God as a vulnerable God. And it's true, you know, we we don't always talk about God in those terms. But I think when we go to the Bible, we realize that the Bible wants us to think about God in those terms. So our first message was about the vulnerability of our Father. And we saw that in Genesis 6, verse 6. And today we're going to focus on the vulnerability of Jesus Christ, our Savior. The excruciating pain that our Savior needed to endure. So we are going to focus on that. And we're also going to see, but what does it say to us? in the times that we are living. Now, as I've mentioned to you before, like there's a professor in Austin, Texas, and she's well known for the study she did on relationships. And she also had a TED Talks. She is Professor Brene Brown. She wrote very famous books as well. But if you want to listen to a good message or a good talk. It's not from the Bible. She just did some research. She's a university professor and she did the research on on relationships. What is the thing that made people to have good quality authentic relationships? What are those people who have fulfilling relationships in common? And then she boiled it down to one word and that is the word vulnerability. She said that vulnerability is the key to connection. Vulnerability is the key to healthy relationships. And we know that vulnerability is a buzzword in the days that we are living because it's not a thing that you get everywhere around the corners of this world. Vulnerability is a rarity. That is why people talk about it. We have the Me Too movement. It is all about vulnerable people who came forward because they were too vulnerable at that stage to come forward. But then the platform was there for people who went through a difficult time to come forward. But if vulnerability is the key to authentic, fulfilled relationships, what does it say about God? Because God desires a relationship with us. Then we've realized last week in our message that our Father is indeed a vulnerable God. In Genesis 6, verse 6, you know, after the creation and God said it was good, God said in Genesis 6, verse 6, He said, I regret that I made human beings. I'm grieved and I'm going to wipe them from the face of the earth. So God made His heart known. And God said, 
in a second way, in the next verse, in Genesis 6 verse 7, he said, I'm grieved. I regret that I made human beings. So God, God's heart was filled with pain and God made it known to us as human beings. Because when God decided to create this world and to create human beings, it was a risk because God created us in His image. And that also means that we have a free will. So we had the free will to walk away from this relationship. And we as human beings did. And this is why God was grieved because everything was so good. Why would they walk away from that? And that is why sin is a mystery. We cannot explain it. Why did it happen? Everything was so good. And then something beautiful happened. In verse 7, it says of Genesis 6, God decided, I'm going to wipe you from the face of the earth. I have been, had enough of this. And then in verse 8 of Genesis 6, there's the turning point. God shows his heart. It says, but God found favor in Noah. The word but always brings a transition in a conversation. But God found favor in Noah. So God decided, I will not wipe you from the face of the earth because God's love always supersedes His wrath. And then the Old Testament story continued. And we realize when God said, I'm going to start with Noah again, He re-entered the story of humanity. God made Himself vulnerable once again when He re-entered this journey with humanity because He said, I'm not going to wipe you away from the face of the earth, but Noah found favor. So I'm going to work through Noah and I, and I will try again because I want a relationship with, with you. And we realize that God made him vulnerable. The father made him vulnerable because he had regret. And that shows us that God indeed wants to have a true relationship with us, an authentic relationship. As Brene, Brene Brown discovered, that vulnerability is the key to authentic relationships. It is the key to deep connection. And we see that in God. God was willing to make Himself vulnerable. Why? Because He wanted a deep relationship with us. And as God re-entered this story, God made His vulnerability stronger when He made a covenant with Abram. God told Abram, I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people and from you they will become a savior one day. So when God made covenants with people like Abram, a covenant was to take a shaky relationship and make it more firm. That is what was a covenant, to take a shaky relationship because the relationship was shaky and God wants a more firm relationship. He made a covenant with Abram. And then the stories continued in the Old Testament. And then we have David there as well. David also disappointed God very much, but David admitted it later. So we see this line. Cain killed Abel, and then Seth was the other brother. And he, he was the only good brother because Cain is a murderer, the other brother is dead, and there's Seth. And then God decided, I'm going to work through Seth's line. And Noah comes from Seth's line. That's why God said, I will find favor with Noah because he's from Seth's family. And Abram is from Seth's family. And if you read the family line of Jesus in Matthew 1, you will see it is Seth, Noah, Abram, David, Jesus. So God said, I will, I will stick to my covenant because I want to turn this shaky relationship into a firm relationship and then so we see that God the Father made himself vulnerable. Brene Brown continued to say to talk about vulnerability as we've mentioned she said the key to, vul to a good healthy relationship is vulnerability and I think everyone was in awe because they, they realized it's true and she's a very popular speaker very popular author and she brought the word vulnerability into the, into the conversation of our day. But then she said something beautiful. She said, her definition of vulnerability is the willingness to be seen. 
the willingness to open your heart so that other people can see that. So her definition, just to summarize, is the willingness to be seen. While her talk at TED Talks and the writings she does is not about Christianity. It's about her research about daily life. But when you go to the Bible, it's there. Because God actually embodied that definition of Brene Brown. Because God made him seen through Jesus Christ. God was willing to make himself visible. And that's the definition of vulnerability. The willingness to be seen. And God just embodied that when Jesus was born. I just want to give us four verses. There are many others. But just to show us that God the Father was willing to make Himself seen through Jesus Christ. Well, God created through the spoken word. And that is why the Bible is God's word written down for us. That's why the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away. It is Matthew 24, 24 verse 35. But His word will last forever because it contains the wisdom of God. And then John 1 verse 14 says it's so beautiful. But let's go to verse 1 first. John, the gospel was written to a, a universal audience. And he said, in the beginning, verse 1 of John, it reminds us of Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning, John 1. Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word, capital W, was with God, and the Word was God. And the people who read that, because for them the Word, the Logos, was everything, because everything was created through this Word. And then John was brilliant to get their attention. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So they realized the people, you know, the, the, the non-speaking, you know, the, the non-Jewish speaking people, the Gentiles, they were, they studied the Logos, which is the translation of the word. Because according to that, for them, it was the wisdom that kept the whole universe together. And when John, the gospel author, used the word Logos, he grabbed their attention and then he continued and then in verse 14 brilliant in a brilliant way um, the apostle john wrote in john 1 verse 14 he says and this word became flesh and dwell among us what does that mean this word god made himself visible he dwelt among us Eugene Peterson in his message translates it in a, in a different way, but I, I actually like it. The Word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. So God made Himself visible through Jesus and He moved into the neighborhood. And what is in the neighborhood? Vulnerable people, people with pain, people with a lot of suffering. And Jesus moved into the neighborhood to meet people where they were. So that's John, verse, John 1 verse 14. It shows us that Jesus is the visible God. And then you have another verse in the Bible, Colossians um, 1 verse 15. Colossians 1 verse 15 says that Jesus is the image of God. And we are also created towards the image of God. But Jesus is the perfect image of God. So the Word became flesh. Jesus, in, according to Colossians 1.15, He is the image of God. And then you have Philippians 2 verse 5. It says that, it's a beautiful verse, Philippians 2 verse, uh, actually verse 6. It says that Jesus was equal to the Father. He was equal to the Father. But He didn't cling to that. He, he let it go to become part of us, to make Himself visible to make himself vulnerable and then there's a other verse hebrews 1 verse 3 it's a beautiful verse hebrews 1 verse 3 says the following the sun is the radiance of god's glory and the exact representation of his being i want to read it again it's beautiful the sun jesus is the radiance of god's glory 
and the exact representation of his being. So we can see Jesus is God in a visible way. So Brene Brown said, true vulnerability is the willingness to be seen. So God embodied that definition because God made himself known through Jesus Christ. He's the word that became flesh, according to John 1.14. Colossians 1.15, he's the image of God. Uh, Philippians 2.6, he's equal to God. And Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, he is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of God's being. And he moved into the neighborhood. You know, I, I think a lot about this and I was thinking, if we didn't know about the stories of the Bible and nothing about Jesus and someone were to ask, I, can, can anyone write a story and there's a million dollar prize for the best story? how we can make God visible and make Him part of humanity. Please write a story. I, I thought about it and I think no one would have come up with the story of Jesus coming as a baby. God made Himself <laughs> visible to us through a vulnerable baby. I don't think we had, would have had that in mind. It is mind-boggling. But it shows us the vulnerability of God. So Jesus, his birth was, an, was a display of vulnerability. He was born in a barn, ordinary people, you know, his parents. He needed to flee for his life when he was a baby. King Herod wanted to kill the babies. So he was vulnerable from day one. And then we know the story of Jesus, how he continued to live. He was denied. He was betrayed. He felt loneliness, he was tempted, he experienced everything that we did experience. And even the shortest verse in the Bible tells us, it says, Jesus wept. God, the Savior, wept. He showed his vulnerability. It is just fascinating and mind-boggling. Now the question is, why? Did God make himself visible and willing to make himself visible through Jesus? I just want to give two reasons. There are probably many more, but two reasons that I think that will capture the reason why God made himself visible through Jesus, moved into the neighborhood and experienced excruciating pain on the cross why Jesus was willing to do that for us. So the first reason, I think, is that when Jesus made himself vulnerable, it is his way to connect to us. It's so difficult to connect to people who don't understand your pain. So Jesus made himself vulnerable to sympathize with us. It is to connect with us. Now, I would like to read for us Hebrews 2, verse 18. Hebrews 2, verse 18 says, Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Temptation is all over the place. So it says here, Jesus was also tempted so that he can understand so he can sympathize with us. And then there's another beautiful verse. It is um, Hebrews 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. I want to read again Hebrews 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. So verse 15 says that Jesus emphasized, uh, you know, has empathy with us because he, he had experienced everything that we experience in our daily lives. 
So what did, why, why did Jesus need to become a human being? Why was he the display of the vulnerability of God? So that he could connect to us, so that he could relate to us, so that he could sympathize with us. And that is just amazing that God made himself so vulnerable, as Brene Brown said, to connect. Because the key to real connection is vulnerability. And God made himself so vulnerable to have this real connection with us as human beings. And then it reminds me of what C.S. Lewis said, according to this temptation that the Bible is talking about, that Jesus was tempted as well. C.S. Lewis said that Jesus is the only person that did not yield to temptation. Jesus is the only person that experience the full impact of what temptation means. And then he continues and he has a brilliant line when he says, Jesus is the complete reality. Jesus is the complete reality. That is well said by C.S. Lewis. Jesus is the complete reality. The other day someone told me, you know, I'm not really Christian or religious, I'm just spiritual. Then I told the person, I'm not religious and I'm not spiritual either. I told the person, I want to be real. I wanted to be authentic. Because Jesus Christ is the complete reality. Because he had experienced everything that we experience, all the pain, the suffering. So Jesus didn't come to turn us into Christians. Jesus came to turn us into human beings, into a reality, so that people can relate to our reality. And they can only relate when you are vulnerable. This is why the outcasts of society follow Jesus so much when he was on earth, because they could relate to him. He never judged them. A second reason. So the first reason he sympathized with us. And you know, when you go through a difficult time and you also see someone going through the same, it stirs compassion towards that person because you have walked that path. You understand. You know what it is. So when we come to Jesus, there's one thing no one can accuse him of. And this is what C.S. Lewis also said. We can never accuse Jesus and we can never say the following about Jesus. He does not understand. No one can say that. He understands because of what he had experienced as a human being. And that brings me to the second thing. Well, the book of Hebrews talks a lot about the high priest. Now, in the Old Testament, there was also the high priest. And the function of the high priest was he represented the people to God, in relation to God. So he represented the people. He needed to bring the sacrifices in the temple. And he cannot enter the most, he couldn't enter the most holy without bringing an, a sacrifice for his own son. But when Jesus came, the Bible says in Hebrews, he became the perfect high priest. He didn't bring a sacrifice. He was the sacrifice. And if I read for you Hebrews 4 verse 14, it says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firm to the faith we profess. So it says, since we have a great high priest. Now, what makes Jesus such a great high priest? I think two things. The th in his humanity, he represented us. In his divinity, he represented God. That's why he was the perfect high priest. He, he could die for my sin because he was the perfect high priest. He paid the debt. I couldn't pay because I owed a debt I couldn't pay. So Jesus paid a debt he didn't owe. 
because I owed a debt I couldn't pay. That is what makes him such a brilliant high priest. So Jesus was a human being who identified with our vulnerability and made himself vulnerability. But in his divinity he never sinned. That is what made him the high priest. That is why he could go to the cross and represented us because there was no sin in Jesus Christ. Because he was without sin, he became the source of our salvation. And because he made himself vulnerable through his suffering, he became the source of our grace. And when one thinks about it, you know, one needs to think about it, you need to digest it, because it is, it is so fresh, so amazing, and that is the good news. So to conclude, Jesus identified himself with us through his vulnerability to say, I understand your pain, I hear your cry, I sympathize with you. And number two, I became the perfect high priest because I'm without sin. I didn't bring a sacrifice. I am the sacrifice. And then Jesus cried on the cross. He cried out, Tetelestai. It is done. He didn't say, I am done. What was done? The price he paid for our sin. Because God had a problem when we sin. God is loving. And if God was only loving, He would have turned a blind eye. He would not have, you know, worried about our sin. If God was only righteous, He would have wiped us from the face of the earth. Because sin needs to be punished. But now He's loving. He loves us. He doesn't want to wipe us from the face of the earth. But in his righteousness, he cannot turn a blind eye. Otherwise, he's not God. He needs to deal with the wrongs. And then he came in his humanity because he didn't want us to be on the cross. He said, I will pay the price that you cannot pay. And through his vulnerability, he reconciled us with him. And that reminds me of the following story of a little friends of a friend's village there was a beautiful old-fashioned church building and in front of the church building was a beautiful statue of Jesus Christ with outstretched hands and during the war a bomb exploded very close to this statue and it just scattered all over the place and following the war the citizens of the village decided we will collect all the missing pieces and we will put it together so that we can have our statue back and they collected many pieces and they just put it back together so well but then they realized a huge problem they couldn't find the hands of jesus and then one person lamented and said lamented and said you know what Christ without hands is not a real Christ, so let us just get a new one. And then someone came up with the idea, and they've put a bronze plaque at the feet of Jesus, and it says, I don't have hands, but I have your hands. I don't have hands, but your hands. And this is so true. In this vulnerable world, we become the hands of Jesus Christ. We reach out to people. We dial the phone number. We get people to a restaurant, buy coffee, to show the world that only through vulnerability there is authentic relationships. It can only happen if we are willing to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. I want to summarize. Jesus Christ made himself vulnerable. Number one, to show us that he has empathy 
for us. He wants to connect with us. He wants to relate with us. And it stirred up so much compassion. Number two, in his humanity, he became the perfect high priest because he didn't need to bring sacrifices for himself because he was without sin. But he took our sin and he took it to the cross and he paid the price so that we can be free. Jesus cried out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that we can cry out in awe, My God, my God, why have you remembered me? Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your amazing love. Thank you, Lord, that you're a good God. And thank you, Lord, that we can not only pray and address you as the Almighty God, but we can also say the vulnerable God who wants to connect, the vulnerable God who relates, the vulnerable God who has empathy with us, the vulnerable God who reconciled himself with us by taking the price, the, the sacrifice on him and not on us because we would not have made it. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. It's not always easy to fathom it. It's not always easy to understand. But let it, let it move us, let it change us and transform us into human beings that is authentic, human beings that don't gossip, that don't judge other people, but human beings who show their own vulnerability because that's the only way people will relate. Amen. So wherever you are, God has placed you. God has placed you with a purpose. And wherever you go, God is sending you. Jesus was the Word of God, the visible God who moved into the neighborhood. Because you cannot spell good news and God and good without the word go. God wants us to go into the neighborhoods go to our friends go to those who are lonely and make yourself vulnerable then they will relate and if they relate you just point them to the most vulnerable who wants to have a relationship with people amen